Hi, Susan. Hi, Frank. It's good to be uh, here. Uh, yeah. Uh, amazing to to see you again. We haven't spoken for a few, I think it's about two months, last time I maybe interviewed you and, and Francesca. You, it's great to be able to talk to you because you've just spent um, two and a half weeks in Gaza. You've been out of Gaza for about three weeks. Um, we know um, not a lot of uh, internationals, let's call them that, um, actually get into Gaza. So um, we know no journalist gets into Gaza. Uh, you, you've spoken about it in length uh, on Democracy Now! and, and other programs, but I, I, if it's okay, I still wanted to ask you, um, I know how, how much you've been following the massacre, the genocide in Gaza since October 7th, but being on the ground, um, were you still shocked by what you saw? What you saw? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and that was sort of the crux of what I've been saying and writing about is how, uh, how shocking it is, even for those of us who have been following every, every detail, every news item, every video. Um, it's just the totality of this, and I think we just need to call it a Holocaust. I, it really is. It's, it's massive. It, nobody is spared. There's no, there's no bubble, no, no bubble for the rich as there often are. in in times like this, there's just, it's massive agony. Um, you know, people, everybody is forced into these just degrading ways of living. Um, and you know what, like, for example, people, people can't bathe. And, you know, the way not being able to bathe breaks you down is pretty profound, you know, um, these aren't people who are accustomed to living outdoors. These are, you know, often most of them are, uh, are you know, are, are professionals, people who lived in homes, multi-generational homes who had histories. All of that is, is erased. The trauma is, is extraordinary. It is just, uh, you can't rip, wrap your brain around it really. Um, there's, Toilets are shared by hundreds of people. People, you know, structure their days around uh, planning to how to get to a toilet. You know, it's just, there's something so simple. Um, you know, the ability to brush your teeth. I mean, it's just to have a cup of coffee, um, to feel human, you know, to have a, a you know, one of my, one of the women at the hospital, um, her husband had to work for weeks to, to, to save up $3 to get, you know, to have to pay for the transportation to get to her. But he also had the problem of, you know, coming with clean clothes when he only had one pair of clothes, one set of clothes. And so he would, and there's, you know, he, he found this little sort of, corner where he could wash his clothes and wait naked in that corner until they dried like these are the th things that people are doing just to have some semblance of dignity and so this isn't the dramatic footage that that you get you know in these videos this is the daily dismantling of people of their psyches of their dignity of their personhood of their um just every every little bit is 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 just being dismantled and people are tired they are exhausted um children have seen what no child should ever seen and they see it repeatedly it isn't just one shock of a dead person in the road or seeing their friends dismembered. It isn't just that one thing. It is a repetition of, 
uh, of terror. You know, Israel's constantly flying these drones all over everybody's heads all the time. And now they're, you know, they take to flying their warplanes low to that just, you know, create this horrific, terrifying sound for kids. So you've had people with elevated cortisol levels for for you know nearly six months uh people are operating under this high level of terror and so you can imagine what that just does to people i mean actually it's hard to imagine like it, it's just their brains are getting rewired they are um they're not okay nobody's okay and people are hungry um they're thirsty, they're disoriented, they're in pain, they're mourning, they're fighting dis rampant diseases, hepatitis is spreading like wildfire, there are a lot of cases of meningitis, um, just people aren't able to get enough antibiotics, and so, uh, you know, the, the folks who are injured who go into the hospital and they have successful surgeries, the post-op care is stretched to the, to the limits. And so people are getting infections and then getting sepsis. I mean, I could go on and on and on. It, it just, yeah, you get the picture. I and mean, what you're saying is, is so shocking, you know, and, um, I, I spoke to Iman uh, Marifi. She's a French nurse who spent um, 10 days or two weeks in Gaza uh, just before you, kind of, you know. And um, and when she came back, she had the, we spoke and she had the, you know, the same sort of feeling of, um, uh, you know, human made. And this is what we have to re remember, you know, all the time, human made genocide it's not a catastrophe it's not a tsunami it's not a you know an earthquake um but what, what iman was talking about as well was the fact that a lot of people in gaza felt ashamed that a visitor was seeing them and their houses and their city and the towns in the in this state and they kept telling iman like Oh, we're so sorry, you know, you're seeing this, you know, uh, you know, come back, you know, you might, you see, you know, they were showing her pictures of their house before and stuff. So there's this, uh, and I know about that because I've been to Palestine, this dignity, you know, and, and what you've been telling me, it, it's also, you know, this sort of sociocide, right? Or I don't even know how to call it where they, they're actually trying to really distract a society you know and and um but I, I, i'll go to my next question um what iman was saying is that when she came back from gaza she started like being invited on tv shows and in the french parliament the french senate and and she told them you know she's a nurse i've 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 um, i've seen babies with no legs no arms i've seen kids with no remaining families i've but what she told me is that you know i she felt like you know when I'm going to come back and tell this to the our, you know, leaders, they're going to go, oh, wow, we didn't know. Let's stop this right now. But she was like, you know, I've been back in France for two weeks now, and there's still no ceasefire. So what do you feel about that? This sense of like, they know, you know, the, 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 the whatever politician, they know what's happening. They've had enough witnesses they've had enough reports they've had enough media stuff they know what's happening and there's still no ceasefire what does he say about i don't know them us humanity i mean I, are you are you really shocked by that do you actually think they give a shit about about the things they pretend to care about do you do you honestly think they care whether we live or die they they don't. I have always known that. Most of us have always known that. The only way they seem to be changing their tunes at this hour is because they are worried about their own 
careers, their own political uh, trajectories, because they haven't been successful in gatekeeping all of the information. As you said, Israel is not allowing any journalists to enter. And they have been actively killing or or chasing out the journalists that are there. There's only a few left now. And so, you know, the, the, the picture that you're getting is just a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of the reality and the magnitude of what's happening. And um, so... So they they not only know what's going on, but they know that Israel is hiding most of it. They're not stupid. I mean, this is this is this is, and it's not you know they this is they do this all over the world with black and brown people. It's about their their interests. It's just the this is the 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 ruling elite does what they want with us, and I think, um, and I hope that this that Gaza will mark a change in human destiny when it comes to that. I do think that, you know, we will look back from history and look at this moment as the moment, the pivotal time when things made a U-turn or turned or whatever, U-turn or left turn or right turn, whatever it is, but a turn. You know, that's, that's the only thing, thing that keeps me going that, that, no, that's not the only thing that keeps me going, but that's the only vision that this is, you know, we spoke about this before, you know, how do we make sure this moment changes everything? Because we know that the enemy and the opposite forces are going to make sure this moment doesn't change anything. Are going to make sure that, oh, it's Netanyahu's fault. We told you, you know. Uh, you yeah. know, and and they're gonna have like yeah, lapid in power, and they're gonna say that's it. You know, you know, and but we need to make sure it doesn't go this way. And um, how do we do it? I mean, we've seen it in the streets. We've we've seen it. You know, this mid so much going on in in terms of solidarity, also in the global s- south. Actually, primarily in the global south, not primarily, but you know, a lot has been happening in the global south. You've been writing about this talking about this for years the fact that you know fuck the west fuck lobbying biden and whatever david cameron and sunak they are part of the problem they are the elites that don't give a shit about us dying so let's let's find a common struggle with the people brown black people of the south that care about yeah us you know and uh, and the, which is the majority world as well um yeah do you think it is it is primarily the global yeah it is primarily the global south but it's also the um the working class in the west the poor and and the the uh, the uh black and brown people in the west as well and um and the working class and the disenfranchised it's everywhere i mean there are plenty of people in the global south who are the who represent the ruling elite i mean you look at the um, the ruling elite in the Arab world. I mean, they're part of the global, technically part of the global South, but they're part of the problem. They're a big part of the problem. So I think um, uh, yeah, I mean, this is one of the reasons I never really had much faith in electoral politics, even though I did write an article recently to ditch Biden. Um, but I I have never really believed in in lobby efforts, except where at least lobby efforts that aim to sort of bring awareness, because, you know, there's always this assumption that these people have a conscience, that these people care about, you know, that they have a moral compass and they don't. They really and that's the truth. They don't have a moral compass. The only thing that they respond to is money and and uh, and power. Uh, and unless you can demonstrate that you can affect their careers in some way and you can affect their lives in some way, nothing will change. And so I think, you know, to answer your question on what do we do? Well, we do what we have been doing. We do more of it. We 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 stay in the streets. We disrupt their everyday lives. We do not allow them to have a moment of rest 
Everything they do should be inconvenienced. Their little meetings, their little conferences, their parliaments, their resolutions, their, you know, uh, uh, their traffic. I mean, I think, you know, going about their days as usual, I think we need to disrupt every every aspect of society. And I think we need to make them as uncomfortable as we possibly can. It needs to be very clear that that the people of the world have had enough, that we will not continue to go on with business as usual. We are tired. The world is tired of these endless wars, these endless Western imperial bullshit death machines and genocides and and uh and pain and just agony that they inflict on all of us all the time for their own greedy ends and that's what this is ultimately this is a land and grab it is a resource grab it is a jewish white supremacist movement uh, that that has always wanted to remove us from our homeland. And now they, you know, it was, they were at least honest in the beginning that this was a colonial endeavor. You know, they called it the the Jewish, uh, the, you know, the Jewish col- colonial organization or whatever. They had all these different associations to collect money and they were very clear about their role as colonizers and settlers, right? They were honest. Uh, but now they, they've switched to this, like, we're indigenous. Like, like the, the the bullshit the, the the absurdities of their narrative is just mind blowing it's and it just passes it passes in western media and western discourse like it's fact just like the 40 beheaded babies and now you have these you know these rich white billionaire hollywood executives deciding oh we're indigenous to this land that that they you know none of us have none of them had ever set foot on or ever even probably knew about prior to uh, to, to Zionism, you know, there's so many freaking holes in this and in, in their in their narratives that um, it's just mind blowing that anybody would entertain. It's just it's it, that it entertain it as like as even a topic to discuss. It's that stupid and that absurd and that mythical. You know, I I couldn't agree more on everything you've you've said about electoral politics uh electoral politics um i i find it so hard to explain to people why it doesn't make any sense that biden or trump can 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 be our masters you know it doesn't make any sense whether you know it doesn't make any sense. You know, Biden will probably die if he's elected. You know, he can't even speak already. And, you know, but but what what, what I, I find I find it hard to grasp with, it's this like you've talked about mind blowing. And and it's you know, like something happened in France recently. So Sciences Po, which is one of the most famous French universities was occupied by, um, you know, pro-justice, pro-humanity, pro-love comrades. And apparently, and, you know, you know when you've worked on this for that long that it was bullshit at the first minute, you know, but apparently a Jewish woman was not allowed to get into the amphitheater because she was Jewish. Like after five minutes, it was dismantled. This is complete bull- bullshit. This woman w- was a Zionist, well-known Zionist, who was heckling every meeting, who was taking pictures of people, you know, um, without telling them, who was posting pictures online. So she was a disruptor, and she was not allowed in the meeting because she was a disruptor. And and the organizer said there were other Jewish people in the meeting, including people that don't agree with us. So it's bullshit. This story made headline news in every fucking French newspaper, TV show. The president of the fucking Macron said that, you know, you know, anti-Semitism has got no place in our universities. And what's mind blowing is that it's fake news, but fake news that you have the evidence in the minute that it was produced, that it was fake news. And still it blows, it blows off, you know, it's like snowballs, you know, anti-Semitism in the our universities. So it's like, 
I really think, and I was talking to a, 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 a Tunisian author, actress, recently who was involved in the 2011 uprising against Ben Ali in, in Tunisia. She's been in Paris for about four years now, and she was telling me Paris now is Tunis 20, uh, 2009. You can feel mm -hmm. the seeds of to totalitarianism. Yeah. You know, and I feel, you know, when I speak to you now, I, I, I can feel maybe I'm wrong with some anger. And I think sometimes anger is necessary. And I, actually, anger is, is a gift. We need to be angry. Absolutely. Outrage. That's an yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that. Sorry to interrupt. But this idea. No, no. This is, interrupt this is me, another, please. Yeah. This is another thing that, you know, they have sort of planted through cultural, popular culture. Oh, that my God. Yeah. Anger is somehow bad or that you should not be angry, that being angry makes you um, irrelevant or, or irrational. But. It's because they fear our anger. Oh my god. They yeah. have they mm. have constructed this whole narrative around that to uh to ostracize anger, right? To make it unnatural, to make it when when in reality, this is I I embrace my anger. I love my anger. It is my fuel, it is my passion, it is my power. And and yeah, and, and we should all be angry. We should be outraged, we should be enraged when we are in the streets because they sh and they should fear our anger and we should be angry and we should nurture our anger. Um the fact that all of the, the whole media ran with that story that you're saying that that total complete fabrication should tell you that there that that French media like US media like other western media has an agenda and it's being it's being controlled by people with that agenda and you know it's the and, and this is the zionist sort of narrative that anything palestinians do to israelis it's that we do it because they're jewish right which is stupid it like as if it has nothing to do with the fact that these people have been brutalizing and pouring this hatred, this violent hatred on us for decade after decade after decade, affecting every part of our lives. And um, as if that has nothing to do with it, and we're just these crazy, irrational people who want to kill Jews. I mean, that's the, again, this goes back to these stupid, absurd narratives that they put out. But I do agree with your friend because I think this stuff is going to blow up in their face and I think it's going to blow up spectacularly and we have to make sure that it does. because. This younger generation is a lot smarter. They are, um, they're not having it. They are fed up. And, and I think, you know, I, I, I think, I think that's where we all need to be. I think we just need to keep pushing and not despair because everything they do is to, is to take up our time. I was just talking to a friend of mine who's having to deal with these stupid frivolous lawsuits that are filed against her as a professor. You know, they're meaningless and they're meritless, but they do this stuff to occupy our time and to take us away from activism. They target powerful voices to basically just sort of disrupt your lives in some way. Um, that's what they do, you know, and, um, and so it's easy, it's easy for people to get scared and to despair, but um, the most important thing we can do is to resist that uh, sense of being overwhelmed. Every single person can play a role, even if it's, if it's just something minor as sharing content on social media. Um, we all need to be in the streets. We all need to just support the people who are willing to take risks to do direct actions and, and, and so forth. These people will be uh, overthrown. They yeah. will be, they will be, they will get crushed. It will happen. I you have know, total yeah. faith. History teaches that they've got, you know, I think they're counting on their little AIs and their, and all their death machines. And they think that they're going to be able to crush the masses and they, you know, they're going to take a lot of us with them, no doubt, but we, I believe we will prevail. I really, really do. I think that, um, uh, I, I think we are reaching that critical mass yeah. that we have always wanted to reach and, and we have to, because the loss in Gaza cannot cannot be in vain. It just cannot be. What they have done to people in Gaza is is the is beyond the beyond the beyond. I mean, it is just 
it's unspeakable. It is unthinkable. It is unimaginable. And I will tell you something else. Even if they stop the bombs today, hundreds of thousands of people in Gaza are going to continue to die. So the death toll is astronomical. It is not the 31,000. That is the most underestimated number. Um, we all also know that there are tens of thousands still under the rubble that cannot be reached. But there are so many people who have diabetes, who have heart disease, who have hypertension, who are not, who do not have access to medication, cancer patients, dialysis patients, they're all dying. There are, you know, people who, who have special needs and special dietary requirements. As you have seen, they are starving to death because they cannot, they cannot be fed. Um, there, there are, um, tons of people with new who, with new diseases there's rampant diarrhea there's uh, a, a, you know like i said earlier an outbreak of hepatitis all of this stuff is going to have a massive toll on people and and the magnitude of this holocaust is yet to be revealed but it is there and it is lurking and and i see it and others see it but and and the rest of the world needs to see it israel cannot get away with this they absolutely cannot no matter how long it takes for us to hold them accountable or how much time, how much effort it takes, they must be held accountable. And there's just, that's it. And I feel like honestly, seeing what I saw makes me really just sort of dedicate the rest of my life to this, to, to just making sure these motherfuckers are held accountable. That's it. Oh, Susie, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm smiling cause I, I, cannot agree more and I've and I feel it in my gut as well that it's in the halas they, they are going to lose they are losing already and it's like you know the the this whole this like old world all of them all of those white filthy rich genocidal right-wing racist um it's it's like the last hurrah right they they know it's over and it's going to be hard. It might be hard for another few years, but they know it's over. And what you've been saying about the young, the younger generation, I've experienced it as well. I was in Paris last week. Uh, I've been active in Brussels, uh, in London, and I see the youth, like, you know, 20, 25 years old, so fucking smart. They, in, they are in the Me Too feminist meetings, they are in the Palestine meetings, they are in the direct action meetings, they, they, they got it. They got it, that everything is linked. That, and that Palestine actually is and could be, but I think not could be, is the key to this yeah. whole fucking world crumbling. And, and you know, like, I, 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 I remember always like when you, you know, listening to Ilan Pape and, 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 and Angela Davis and saying like you know we hope we'll see a, a free palestine before we we go you know before we die but you know we're not sure about it and you know i'm 46 and i've been starting like a few years ago i was like would i ever be able to go to palestine in a free palestine you know but now and I've, i was telling this to my like kids like recently i'm i'm sure of it i, mean, I know that before i die I'll experience, uh, we'll experience a free Palestine. And I hope, and I'm quite convinced that it, it just can't, like as you, it, it just cannot continue. It, it just, it doesn't make any sense for this fucking nightmare to continue. And for these people that are the 1% sending bombs to the night on, on 99% of the humanity, you know, on black, black, brown, it, it doesn't make any sense for it to continue. So, Again, I, 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 I love this anger. You know, I'm a big fan of Rage Against the Machine. You know, the band, and in one yeah. of their songs, Zach De La Rocha like screams, "Anger is the is a gift," and I've always mm. liked that. You know, anger is a gift because also what you've said. Oh fuck! I hate these meetings when you go and the first thing people tell you is, "By the way, we are non-violent." peaceful it's very important you know this like white fucking whatever you, you want to call it yeah. yeah sometimes you know we need and i'm you know, we need 
them to be worried and scared. You know, yeah, yeah. I don't know what, and know. that's another thing that nonviolence narrative as well. That's another thing that they have sort of made, yeah. Uh, you just made, you know, as as that's this. It's and it's so interesting because, like, you will often f- hear like these white liberals say, "Well, you know, where's the Palestinian Gandhi or something?" Oh my as, god! Okay, you know what? First of all, and then and then sadly, Palestinians will respond, "Well, we did, but they assassinated him," as if as if that's that's the only way. And I and I'm like, you know what? We don't want a fucking Gandhi, or we don't want that. We 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 are going to meet. Your violence, your unspeakable terrorism with whatever, whatever violence we can, we can muster. And we have that right. We have the right to resist this unrelenting terrorism against us decade after decade after decade. We have that right. And, and anybody, anybody who, who suggests otherwise has no no place in our movement, honestly. There's nothing, you know, nonviolence is a great, it's a great option. It's an option. It's one of the options. As a matter of fact, it's been the prevailing option for Palestinians who just, you know, exist every day on their land. I mean, that's a form of nonviolent resistance, just to exist and go to school and build businesses and build schools and and continue to live and to hope. That is the ultimate nonviolent resistance. But we also have the right to take up arms. We have the right to you know, to stab somebody coming into our, into our home. We have that right. And, um, and people who try to say otherwise are, are trolls and they are, um, disruptors of, of what we need to do. Yeah. I, I, I think I want to end it this way because it's, it's, (laughs) it might sound funny, but it's a positive message. And, and it's also becoming this, like, brainwashing of like you know we we have the high moral ground but it doesn't mean that we cannot meet them with force as well and um and also you talk about the the palestinian gandhi or or whatever you know most people who say this don't even know who the fuck gandhi was or who the fuck mandela was where is the Palestinian Mandela? Mandela f- was the founder of the armed know. wing of the ANC. Yeah, what the exactly. fuck are we talking about? They don't about? even know, you know the history of Mandela, right? They know shit. They don't know Sorry. anything about the ANC or what the ANC was doing and what they represented. And, you know what, um, like, what pisses me off the most is that we are our leaders, I mean, not mine, but like they are called leaders, are thick as brick. They are really uneducated, rich you know, idiots, you know, and that's yeah. like, I feel ashamed, you know, I feel like, you know, yeah. It's this Sorry. mediocrity. I mean, they, they, they just reek of mediocrity. It is shock. You know, when you're a child, I remember when I was a child, they, you know, you kind of look up at these adults and these people in, in uh, leadership positions and you think they're so smart and they know so much more than you do. Yeah. And then you grow up and you listen to them speak and you realize like, oh my God, these are the people who have been running the world. And it's it is shocking. It is shocking. There, 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 there's some of them are just outright stupid, who have no sense of history, who have no, uh, no real like cognitive capacity. Even mm. it's shocking. I did I did lobby for a year like MPs in in the British Parliament. Oh my! I was shocked by their fucking. Dumb, dumb, I mean, how dumb they were. Honestly, I was leaving meetings like, are they really like that thick? Like, yeah, man. Yeah, it took me a while to really comprehend it, <laughs> and, but it's true. But you know, I do want to say one thing. You said that you know that they know this is their end. I actually don't think they know. I think that they they believe that the the you know the old tactics are still going to work. I think they believe that they're going to be able to kill their way out of this and to brutalize their way out of this. Um, And uh, I was was this guy on social media that I follow. uh, I can't remember his name. He's just, sorry, I'm just getting old, but he, um, he was talking about how a lot of what's happening reminds him of uh, the way something Marie Antoinette said just before the revolution was that all of these people um, 
in, you know, in court were sort of dancing their way at the edge of the abyss. You know, they were on the abyss and they didn't know it. And they were still having these highfalutin parties with all their jewels and fancy clothes. And they had no idea they were about to fall off a, the cliff. And I think I and and I think he's right. Um, I think they don't know. It's even better. I like the surprise aspect of it. <laughs> Push him off the abyss. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, honestly, like I've got so much like I know like hatred is not like a good feeling. It's not nice, but I've got so much hatred for these people. Honestly, I, I don't. I don't give, you know, anyway. You're allowed. No, no. I mean, it's that's a very natural reaction towards people who are who are, who are so hateful, who have no, um, you gotta. <laughs> no, there's a, anyway, no. Yeah, he's I mean, going, it's, he's I'm going to saying, soccer training. Anyway. It's just saying it's a normal reaction towards people who have been literally pouring so much violence um on all of us for so long destroying our planet destroying our lives destroying our societies all so they can they can line their pockets a little bit more these people for whom nothing is ever enough no amount of power is enough no amount of money is enough no amount of homes or cars or wealth is enough and 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 they want more and they're happy to just destroy us all to get a little bit more yes they deserve our hatred they deserve our contempt they deserve our violence. They deserve our anger. They deserve everything that that we feel towards them. And um, yeah, you can. We. I'll leave it at that. Thanks, Susan. Um, you know, it, it was um, quite invigorating, actually, which is nice. We need to give each other strength. You know, we need. You know. You know. <laughs> keto we'll get there a... Frank. yeah we, we will we will we will and we will we'll party for days with everyone in a we will. big we're gonna party planet earth of... yeah. yeah we're gonna all meet in jerusalem we're gonna have one big math party oh yeah <laughs> hey thanks susan thanks frank we'll see you soon speak soon yeah bye susan bye